Hello, I am Dr. Patricia Lagaroth, Salem Health Breast Care Center Medical Director. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. This is an opportunity to promote breast cancer awareness and encourage women to take charge of their breast health. In the United States, by the age 90, one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer. By age 50, one in 50 women will, in comparison to age 40, when only one in 200. Breast cancer is the most common cancer that affects American women other than skin cancer. We estimate that this year alone, there will be more than 270,000 new cases of invasive breast cancer diagnosed in this country. Listening to these numbers can be scary for many of us and create great anxiety. These feelings are real and understandable. However, we have to focus on the aspects of our health that we can control. The purpose of this talk is to emphasize the importance of breast cancer screening, the role of adopting good lifestyle habits to keep us healthy and decrease our risk of breast cancer. At Salem Health Breast Care Center, we recommend doing annual screening mammograms starting at the age of 40. This recommendation is supported by different organizations, such as the American Society of Breast Surgeons and American College of Radiology. Let's start by discussing what is the goal of breast cancer screening? To reduce death from breast cancer. How can we achieve this goal? By detecting a cancer when it is small and less likely to have spread. Breast cancer has to reach a certain size to be detected through a screening mammogram. We know that tumors that women can feel tend to be larger and more likely to have spread than those detected through screening mammogram. The average size of a breast cancer found on screening mammogram is the size of a marble. For the purpose of our discussion, a marble is about the size of one centimeter. The smaller the tumor at the time of diagnosis, the less likely to have spread to the lymph nodes. For example, 10% of invasive breast cancers that are one centimeter or smaller have spread to the lymph nodes in comparison with 35% of invasive breast cancers that are two centimeters. A woman with a tumor that is under 2 centimeters and has not spread to the lymph nodes has a greater than 98% five-year survival rate. Patients diagnosed with smaller tumors with no spread to the lymph nodes tend to require less extensive treatment, such as radical surgery and or chemotherapy. Some argue that we should only screen women starting at age 45. We do not endorse this approach for the following reasons. Premenopausal women tend to have higher rates of dense breast tissue, which can affect detection. 75% of all women diagnosed with breast cancer have no identifiable risk factors. We know that mammography is not a perfect tool. However, mammography helps us detect most breast cancer at an early stage. Dense breast tissue can limit the ability to detect a cancer with mammography. This slide describes breast density, how it's reported in a screening mammogram. Category A, which are fatty. Category B, which showed breasts with minimal scattered fibroglandular density. Category C, which are heterogeneously dense breast. And category D, which are extremely dense breast. Dense breast tissue can limit the ability to detect a cancer with mammography. Let's take a moment to explain what is breast density. Breasts are made of glandular tissue, which are composed of lobules and ducts, the supporting tissue, which is also known as fibrous connective tissue, and fatty tissue. Fibrous and fatty tissue influence the size and the shape of our breast. Breasts are dense when they have less fatty tissue. However, having dense breasts is common. 75% of premenopausal women may have dense breasts. 50% of all women will have dense breasts regardless of their age. In other words, as we get older, our breasts become more fatty as our risk of breast cancer increases. Breast density cannot be determined by the way our breasts feel to touch on exam. It can only be determined based on mammogram. Breast density is inherited and can also be influenced by medications such as hormone replacement therapy. Breast density may increase your risk of developing breast cancer, but it is thought to be a minor risk factor. We see many women that are concerned about their risk of developing breast cancer. When learning about the risk factors for breast cancer, it is best to divide them into non-modifiable versus modifiable risk factors. Non-modifiable risk factors are risk factors that we cannot change. I'm going to mention some of them. The gender that we're born with, our age, family history of breast cancer, having our first menstrual period before the age of 12, having no children, having our first term pregnancy after age 30, breast density. Hello, I'm Nancy Ledbetter. I'm an oncology clinical nurse specialist, and I'm certified in both oncology and genetics. Being female and over 50 are often the only identifiable risk factors a woman with breast cancer has. 
but there are some things we can do to reduce our risk. One is limit our consumption of alcohol. There is a lot of research that points to alcohol use as a risk factor for breast cancer, and this includes all types of alcohol, wine and beer and cocktails. The more alcohol a woman drinks, the higher her risk of breast cancer. The American Cancer Society re recommends women drink no more than one drink per day. But even one drink per day raises breast cancer risk by 7 to 10 percent. And alcohol, of course, also increases the risk of several other types of cancer and other health problems. Another modifiable risk factor is being sedentary and or being overweight or obese. Extra weight and obesity and inactivity raise breast cancer risk. This issue is complex. We think there are several factors associated with being overweight or obese or sedentary that influence breast cancer risk. One is body weight itself. Estrogen levels are higher if there is more fat tissue. And we know that estrogen exposure drives breast cancer risk. This is especially true for women who gain weight after menopause. The second factor is activity. Regular exercise is associated with reduced breast cancer risk. The American Cancer Society recommends a routine of about a half hour of exercise every day. And the third factor is diet. And diet is challenging to study because there are so many variables. There are specific nutrients to consider. There's some evidence that low vitamin D levels may raise breast cancer risk. But some of the most compelling evidence about diet is from immigration studies. When women immigrate from countries that have less lower breast cancer rates than in the United States, such as Asian countries, and then they live in the United States for many years and raise their daughters here, their breast cancer risk and their daughter's risk increases. And the theory is that dietary changes raise that risk and that the typical American diet leads to more breast cancer than the typical Asian diet. What is recommended is a diet that is high in fruits and vegetables and low in fat. Now I'd like to talk about a few things that are not risk factors for breast cancer. There are a lot of myths and misunderstandings about what is a risk factor for breast cancer. Birth control pills are not a risk factor for breast cancer. While there is reason to think they might increase risk slightly, that evidence is not strong. And there are many benefits to taking birth control pills. In fact, birth control pills reduce the risk of both ovarian and uterine cancer. Another question I hear often is whether breast size affects breast cancer risk, and the answer is no. Larger breasts are not more likely to develop cancer than smaller breasts. And then another issue relates to family history, and people think that if their family history is only on their father's side, that it's not a risk factor for them. But that's not true. If a woman has a family history of breast cancer on her father's side through, for example, her grandmother or her paternal aunts, that may increase her breast cancer risk. Another myth, uh, misunderstanding, is anything bra related. Bras do not increase breast cancer risk. No type of bra will do that. And finally, I'd like to mention deodorant. Once in a while on the internet, there's a lot of buzz about deodorant causing breast cancer. But that is a myth. Deodorant does not raise the risk of breast cancer. Now I'd like to talk about hormone replacement therapy. Hormone replacement therapy is used to treat menopausal symptoms such as hot flashes. The benefits and risks of hormone replacement therapy have to be considered. One is that quality of life is important, and if a woman is suffering from menopausal symptoms, hormone replacement therapy may be better, very beneficial. Generally, it's recommended to use hormone replacement therapy for as short of time as possible as is needed to alleviate menopausal symptoms. If you are diagnosed with breast cancer or have significant risk factors, an in-depth discussion is necessary with your doctor about your menopausal symptoms and whether or not it's safe for you to use hormone replacement therapy. Now I'd like to talk about family history as a risk factor for breast cancer. Family history is an important risk factor. Many women who have breast cancer have a family history of breast cancer. About 30% of women with breast cancer do have a family history of breast cancer. Having a mother or a sister with breast cancer essentially doubles the risk of breast cancer from 12% to 24%. Hereditary breast cancers are a subset, and they can be diagnosed with a genetic test, and they account for 7 to 10 percent of breast cancers. Important risk factors for hereditary breast cancer are a breast cancer that develops before the age of 50, uh, multiple relatives who are closely related who have breast cancer, male breast cancer, and also Jewish families have a higher rate of the gene mutations that cause hereditary breast cancer. 
A family history of ovarian cancer is also an important risk factor for hereditary breast cancer. And it is important to know if a relative had ovarian cancer versus cervical cancer or uterine cancer, as those cancers are very different with regards to how they affect breast cancer risk. Finally, a family cluster of breast and ovarian cancer and other relatives with pancreatic cancer or male relatives with prostate cancer um, are also risk factors for a hereditary breast cancer problem that can be diagnosed with a genetic test. Genetic testing can identify inherited gene abnormalities and guide care. Women who have gene abnormalities that raise their risk of breast cancer often need to start screening before age 40 and in addition to mammogram have screening breast MRI. Also, prevention for breast cancer and ovarian cancer for women with inherited gene abnormalities may include surgery or medication. Additionally, people who find out they have a gene mutation that increases their risk of breast or other cancers need to notify their relatives so that their relatives can have testing and find out if their medical care uh, needs to change. For people with inherited forms of some cancers, there are some newer treatments that are showing promise, especially for advanced cases. One important thing to understand is that if a woman has a negative genetic test result and she has a positive family history of breast cancer, her breast cancer risk is still increased. Finally, I'd like to mention that direct-to-consumer genetic testing is gaining in popularity, and some of those tests look at genes that are related to breast cancer. But it's important to know that one of the popular tests, 23andMe, does check for BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene mutations, which are associated with breast and ovarian cancer, but it only looks for the mutations that are common in Jewish families. Most mutations are not the ones that are common in Jewish families, so if a person has concerns about their breast and ovarian cancer uh, risk and their family history, the 23andMe test will not be an adequate test. The providers and staff at Salem Health Breast Care Center care about you. We are here to help you with your breast health. I hope that the information that we shared today was valuable. Please go out there and share it with your family and your community. Be proactive about your health. Get screened starting at the age of 40, sooner if you have significant risk factors. Be healthy. Have a diet rich in fruit and vegetables. Exercise at least 30 minutes per day and limit your alcohol consumption. If you have a significant family history of breast and or ovarian cancer, talk to your primary care provider. I hope you found this informative and thank you for listening.